Well, hello everyone and welcome and thank you for joining us as we come to you live from Commodity Classic. I'm Cindy Young with Brownfield Ag News and I'll be your host for this program. Early adopters of new technologies are here in New Orleans to learn about the latest in corn and soybean production. We're excited to be here with several of the experts from UPL to talk about how they're helping growers every step of the way with solutions from seed to harvest. We're going to talk about seed and soil health, crop specific in season solutions by crop, and some very exciting news of a new product being launched right here. Let's get started by meeting our guests and getting to know a little bit more about UPL. And I'll start with Brian Broshin. Let's start uh, here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your role with UPL. Sure, thanks. Uh, my name is Brian Brochin. I'm the U.S. Commercial Head for UPL. I've been here for about six months, but I've been in the industry for about 28 years. So not counting the years of working on a farm growing up, I went to Purdue, got a degree in agronomy, and then I came out and professionally I worked for other agricultural chemical companies, a seed company, um, and then also a biological company. So overall 28 years uh, with agricultural experience professionally. Well, our next guest is James Coday. James, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. My name is James Cody. I'm uh, the strategic marketing manager for UPL. I've been here for about a year and a half now. Um, prior to that, I uh, have a degree in agronomy from the University of Missouri and have spent about 20 to 25 years in the retail distribution business prior to coming to UPL. So really excited about being here today and thanks for this opportunity. Our next guest, Mr. Justison, take it away. Yeah, Lynn Justison, I'm the uh, technical services row crop lead for UPL. Um, uh, I guess the veteran at this point. Um, I'm, I've been with UPL be nine years this spring. Uh, been in the industry uh, 29 years since I came back. I've been through retail, seed, uh, distribution, uh, wholesale, um, and now uh, in manufacturing in, in UPL. So uh, roundabout with that, so we cover all the row crop areas, and that's uh, I'm centered in, uh, in the central U.S. and the Omaha, Nebraska area. Okay, well, welcome, gentlemen, and let's start with an overview of UPL, and Brian will have uh, you do that. And to begin with, tell me about UPL. What's your focus? Yeah, so UPL is a <clears throat> family-owned agricultural chemical company. We are global. We're about the fifth largest ag chemical company in the world, and we have a um, an expansive portfolio of herbicides, fungicides, insecticides that um, fits all crops in the U.S. and uh, we provide solutions for the for the farmer. And you know our focus really is to use the strengths that we have with our flexibilities to provide those new solutions to the to the to the farmer. And so when you think of our strengths, you know manufacturing formulations, people such as Lynn and James here, and you look at the flexibilities that we have as an organization where we can access either actives that we currently own or actives that we partner with other companies on to develop those new solutions. Well, you know, as I look at the UPL booth, I see an Open Ag logo. What is that and, and why is that so important? Yeah, so Open Ag to us, it's, it's really a we really look at that as a purpose for UPL. It's, it's our way of focusing in on the ag value chain and developing those solutions uh, for the farmer. And it says that you know, we're open to new ideas, new innovations, new partnerships of any way that we can to develop products to help um, solve issues that the farmer's facing today. But it also is really ingrained as well in our culture. So from the standpoint that, you know, the team here sitting here, you know, we're, we're open to those new ideas. Um, you know, we want to be agile, we want to be flexible, but you know, you know, we are an organization. We want to have, we want to have fun while we're doing it. So just following up on that a little bit, why is it so important for you to be able to assist growers? Yeah, so, you know, we're here today because of that 
U.S. farmer. You know, we, we know that by delivering products that help them uh, deliver a better ROI on their field um, or and uh, by doing so they're controlling weeds better than they have in the past or, or a disease or an insect that's, that's troubling them. That's why we're here today and we're, we're here today for that U.S. farmer. How does UPL approach the market and do growers have options yeah. with your products? Yeah, I would say that we have more of a, a traditional approach. And what I mean by that is, you know, UPL works with distribution. We also work with retail partners to bring the products down to the farmer. Um, there are a lot of ways that individuals can, can access products, but we think it's that it's important that, that we have people to help support the farmer, explain how our products work, make sure that they're used correctly, and you do that through people. And so that's why we're really taking more of a traditional approach from that standpoint. I continue to hear the word people yeah. come up in the conversation. Thank you very much, Brian. We'll, we'll be back with you with some other questions. We also today have some very exciting news to share. Uh, for that, let's hear from James Cody, Strategic Marketing Manager for UPL. Yeah, great, thank you. You know, being at Commodity Classics, really a great opportunity to be able to launch a new product, and we're really excited to be able to do that here today or, or this week. And so what we're launching here is a product called Preview 2.1 SC Herbicide, which is a liquid formulation, a premix of metribuzin and sulfentrazone. Um, that's really built and, you know, as Brian's talked about this, this emphasis on understanding the grower and the grower needs is, you know, our, our team really spent a lot of time understanding what was there and, and where was the best opportunity. And, and our, what we built was, we believe, a really solid product focused on resistance management. And that's ultimately what we're after, is making sure that we get a good, clean start to the season that'll get growers a little bit longer in the season before they have to make that next application. So, you know, I think um, being really focused on weed resistance, controlling them, those major broadleaf weeds is important to us. You can hear a band in the background. You know we're live at Commodity <laughs> Classic, and it's New Orleans. Again, maybe there, maybe that band is uh, here to celebrate uh, course, the excitement of this new product. Yes. So, how does Preview 2.1 SC work, and why should growers be so excited about it? Yeah, for sure. So, it's a pre-emergent herbicide, so it can be applied any time, but two weeks prior, all the way up to pre the the crop emerging. Um, it's uh, again soil applied acts in that way. The reason I think from an excitement perspective is the opportunity um, to start clean and we talk a lot about that so that they um, have greater opportunity um, to do that. It's, it's active ingredients that, that they're familiar with. The liquid formulation is important. We think that'll add some convenience obviously to what they're doing in their operation and again really building the product to go after those difficult to control weeds. And again, the active ingredients in this product, and why why is that so important? Yeah, so it's metribuzin and sulfentrazone. It's a two to one ratio of metribuzin to sulfentrazone. You know, really a lot of the university folks are really starting to drive at metribuzin and the value that it can bring against those resistant weeds to other chemistries. So, you know, it's it's been around for a while, but really that foundational cornerstone um, to a good weed control program. So, James, if a grower wants a full spectrum program, how does Preview fit in? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think really the other, you know, when we think about resistance man management in general, it should be a program approach, right? It's not one year, it's not one product, but it's multiple years. And so it really is built to you know, understand to be flexible enough to work with based on what the grower needs in their field. So if, if they need to add something for additional grass control, it's flexible enough to do that. Um, it's also the rate range is such that they can, you know, based on their soil conditions, organic matter, um, their pH of their soils, that they can flex that rate to make sure that they're, they're getting what they need there. Well, it sounds to me like this is what growers want and need and, and have been asking for. Uh, 
you have to be excited to We're be able excited. to provide them with this new product. So what's the next step for someone who is interested in, in learning more about Preview 2.1 SC? So a couple of places, obviously first, you know, reaching out to their agronomic their agronomic advisor talking to uh, their local retailers. Brian talked about how we how we get to the market, um, and then of course they can also go to previewherbicide.com to get more information as well. I'm sure you have here at Commodity Classic had the opportunity to talk to some growers, and and uh, I, I'm sure you're getting some good reaction from them. We have. It's been good to, as folks have come through the booth. A lot of good questions. Um, you know, and, and I think starting to think through how they might add this into their program. And the geography for this product, where do you see it uh, really getting the most traction? Yeah, in this first year we're really focused on the soybean market. So when you think about the key soybean growing states in the Midwest from, you know, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, um, up through the Dakotas, Minnesota, um, as well as our southern states as well. So really um, a wide geography, but where we're going to focus our efforts in this first year is those, those key Midwest soybean states. James, what did we miss? What, what else do we need to share with our viewers about this exciting new product from UPL? Yeah, so when we think about it, I think the key things are, you know, this extended residual. So we are providing, you know, 10 to 14 days longer than what's in the, the currently in the market today. The second piece is crop safety. So, you know, that's 20 to 30 percent better from a crop safety perspective than, again, competitive products in the marketplace today. The flexibility, the tank mix flexibility to meet what your needs are for that specific field. And then again, just this convenience of, you know, the liquid formulation that is novel in the industry today. Nobody has been able to put, you know, the load of sulfentrazone and metribuzin together in a liquid format. So we're really excited about that. And when you look at the introduction of a new product like this, it's not something that, well, you know, last year we decided we might work on this. It takes a lot of time and energy and, and investment and a lot of brains to come up with, scientific brains to come up with, with this. Yeah, I think, you know, again, our team and, and has done a lot of work from a voice of customer standpoint out talking to growers about what their needs are, where the, where the gaps are to build this product out. So, you know, it has in our formulation team to be able to, to take that information and build the product in such a way that, you know, it's going to be really effective in the market and for growers. Well, we are very excited to learn more and hear about success out in the field. So we'll Thank look you. forward to having you keep us updated on that. Thank Lynn, you. you've been very patient sitting over there, um, sitting over there very quiet. So in this next segment, um, let's discuss what growers can expect in this 2022 growing season. Um, again, Lynn Justison is technical services lead at UPL. Lynn, what challenges are growers facing in this upcoming growing season? Yeah, so um, it varies. And, and I know that's, a, that's not an ideal response, but it, it, it's very, very fitting, I believe. So if you look at, I'm gonna go back to 2021, right? And, and if we think back to April of 2021 and much of the Corn Belt that James spoke on, again, preview, and then in our, in our corn products as well, um, we had a fantastic spring, right? It was warm, the ground was fit. Um, guys were out planting. We planted corn farther north than we probably should have, and even soybeans into places we shouldn't have in April. And then May 1st rolled up. And May 1st rolled in, and it just flipped a switch. And it's like April and May got really confused who they were, because now we have April and May, and May was in April. Right. And that's not very conducive to, to crops, right? Mm -hmm. So if we think about that, and you think about, uh, I'm going to use a corn, uh, a corn crop to start with, is that if that wasn't protected, we saw erratic stands, we saw erratic emergence, we saw a lowered stands, and you get into places like that that 
you're like, okay, what could I have done to protect that? What can I do to make sure I give myself the edge? And I automatically think of things either in insect control or fungicide control early, right? So I think of things like Tepera Plus HD, which this year is the first full launch year with that. Um, if you've used Tepera Plus in the past, this is our next generation. So you've talked about preview and how that's a, that's a bit of a jump forward. And Tepera Plus HD is really that as well. The Tepera Plus HD, we went back and we listened to growers. Growers said, we need more insect control on that. We didn't have a, a, enough rate when we first built the product. So we came back and we went from five ounces to eight and a half. We increased the load rate of that about 40%. At the same time, we challenged the formulation to say, hey, see if you can get a lower rate. They did just that. They lowered the rate, use rate, the standard use rate by 38% too. So those two things, you know, we, we did something that really fit the market. Now, the guys that went ahead and did that last year in 21, um, they saw a thousand to two thousand more plants. They saw more even emergence, and we can validate that with our with our replicated data that, that, that we did last year as well. So as you think about this year, you think, okay, where I'm sitting in Nebraska, I've had less than a foot of snow all summer, or all summer, excuse me, all winter. Um, we haven't had any snow. Really, really odd. I don't have to go very far east. I go east into Illinois, and they've had record snowfall. They're north of 30 inches. That's more than that's almost double what they average get, right? So we're back to that same thing. But I don't know what May's going to bring. I don't know what April's going to bring. I can't predict that. And I'm looking at things, especially in a year like 2022, where you are. Um, we have supply constraints, and I'm 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 not going to hide from those, right? There things are tight. There are. Um, we may not get lots of second chances at acres, right? So I look at something like a Tepera Plus HD, get them all up. We get one great chance to get our crop up. Take that product, get everything up, and get it up greatly. I think you can tie that right to what James was talking about with the preview, right? That extended control may give you the window to get your one post application right. Reduce the pressure, extend how long you have to go out and make that right trip, and get an exceptionally clean weed. And Preview 2.1 is built at the resistant acre. It covers up many other things, but it is a robust treatment system. And if you mix that with something like a moccasin, um, to that, a, you know, a group 15 to extend your control and then come back with an inner mock or an inner line product over the top of that, you have a tremendously solid, full, robust treatment that'll carry out season long. We started by talking about the environment mm -hmm. and uh, that being climate and, and snow, but this environment that we are in in agriculture today is, uh, it, we've never seen anything like no. this before. Absolutely not. Yeah, it's a, it's tough, right? Because we have some of those things, but all those things are all very challenging, but um, I think back to the basics and oftentimes the simplest answer is about we have to guard and optimize every acre we can and I don't think that changes in today's environment any different than it was in 21 or if it was in 18 or any of those. We need to optimize that. We see all time highs in, in, in input costs, no doubt about that. We're also at near record levels for crop, for crop sales as well. So again, optimize what you're doing, get the most out of it you can the acre and I would Again, I'm a huge, I mean, they, 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 they're a student of the game. I want you to go in, study what you've done, figure out what has worked in the past, tweak it, make it better, and and look for solutions to that and get the most out of it you can, right? Um, it's not too late to start. It's not too late to, to, to plan, but have a great plan, have a bit of a backup, and let's go and let's have a great spring. Okay, let's, let's go back to that. Growers <laughs> planning mm -hmm. for this season um, for early disease pressure specifically. Let's let's walk through that. What do they need to do? Uh, a couple of things, right? So the places that we were drier, we may not have seen insect in some of those things as far as um, get froze out or we may have a, a tad more insect pressure depending on where you're at. Um, in those type of areas, an, a, an addition of an insecticide and something like a, either our Vifench or LFC or again, back into the Tepera Plus HD and the rate with that. And then if you want a combination with that and you're in furrow um, and, you're, and the, the Tepera Plus HD fits perfectly in furrow in the starter, mixes better than anything I've ever seen and it stays in solution longer than anything. And I don't use those words lightly. It, that is a very, can be a very finicky place to play around with and this stuff is lights out in that. With that, 
Um, we also have a robust, what I consider the best soil applied strobel errand in there in fluoxystrobin. 122 day half-life, it will take and buy you time and give you plant health and make that plant very, very healthy right up to the time. We get ready to spray a product like maybe a Zolera FX at BT um, or another product at BT to come back in and follow up on those corn acres. Uh, soybeans, much the same. We don't talk about that early health and that early plant, but we're starting to see a bit of a shift in the market that if the conditions are a little iffy, they'll plant beans before they plant corn now, which is completely different than some of, you know, we go back to our gray hairs and, and, and that that's Absolutely. opposite of what we ever would have done in the past. But we're seeing a bigger spot with that. But in that, that same planter that's doing Tapera Plus HD and furrow for corn, we can do that in soybeans too. And we see nearly four bushel bumps with that, between three and four bushel with that in furrow, in soil, just protect against things like rhizoctonia and many other diseases. So again, it's off to that James's point. It's that healthy, healthy, early start. Start clean, stay clean. That's a fantastic way to start. And I think that too, I think that the whole takeaway of all that to me is the best weed I've ever controlled is the one I never see. The best disease I've ever controlled is the one I never see. Stop them if we don't ever see them. Those are the, that's the best programs in my, in my way of thinking. And that little bit can make such a big difference when you look at the price of mm -hmm. soybeans today when it comes time to sell. So you talked about, Lynn, uh, being a student of the crop. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that. What does that mean and, and how can that help in the planning process? Yeah, so really, uh, the reason why I brought 21 up, you really have to rewind to that, right? I, I'm a big advocate of um, if you're a grower um, and you're, you're um, when you're harvesting, carry a notebook with you. Things are easy to forget. Make notes. If you see something odd, do that. I have a, a, a close grower that I'm as, I, I work with um, um, that does does a really good job, but he'll call me and say, hey, I saw this here. I made a note, but we need to, we need to review that when we go back, right? So those sort of student of the game things make it different. I, at some point, it's great to farm more, but sometimes you have to farm better. And the, to me, this is a more thorough way to farm. So be a student. And if you can't do that, find somebody with the expertise to help you with it. It may be your local retailer. It could be a local crop consultant. Find someone to help you be an expert, right? Um, that student of the game, I think, relates directly to what UPL, and, and, and I, I uh, applaud them for how they approach research and development as part of the team that I'm on. Um, we're, we, my five agronomists um, are students of the game too. We want you to spend half your time in plots and the other half of time we want you with our, with either our retailers or with growers doing those same things so that we become students and then we can help you do that. Everything we're doing and trying to align and what we test to is so that when we see something and then we get that call next year, we say, hey, predictability wise, this is what we see, right? So again, I think all those fit together and, and a student is, is you, again, you should never quit learning. You, know, you shouldn't, you have to continue to look. Look for those little things. Look for a little way to get an edge. Um, don't try it on every acre, but sit, figure, tinker. Um, we don't need to reinvent wheels. We just need to make the wheel a little smoother some days. Thank you, Lynn. You know, as I, I sit here and, and listen to you in this discussion, there is such positive energy and such excitement uh, about the future, again, in this environment that is uh, a little scary for some people. So, so let's just, let's talk a little bit about um, what you're optimistic about in agriculture today uh, with UPL. We know the exciting news about the introduction of a new crop, but um, Brian, are, are there things that you're excited about going forward in agriculture and that, that our farmers need to um, maybe focus on a little bit more? Well, I, I, I will, I'll say it this way and I'll tie it back to, to open ag a little bit. I, I think that James and, and Lynn really just gave two great examples of what open ag means to us where you know, we've, we've opened up partnerships, we've opened up some new ideas and new ways of thinking and we've come out with two products that are unique and really can help the farmer today. Whether it's preview from having a field that's clean from the beginning, whether it's Tapera Plus HD, where you know we have a product in there that delivers exceptional insecticide, insect performance um, and disease performance as well. Um, but the most important thing, especially from Lynn's comments, is that 
you know, real quickly we had a product out there that was we were having some problems with. And through this whole open ag concept, we made changes quickly. We listened to the farmers. We saw their, their pain points that they were having right there. And we brought out a much better product to help them out. And so from that standpoint, I mean, I would, I would kind of mention that from a UPL standpoint, that that's where the open ag concept really comes into play and gives some clear examples. Let's, let's uh, jump to you. I know we have the excitement of the new product. What other things uh, do farmers need to be optimistic about? Are you optimistic about going forward? Yeah, and I, I think expanding a little bit on what Brian was talking there also, and really from a UPL perspective, you know, the broad spectrum of, um, of our portfolio to be able to add different things, do different things, it's really a full solution for, for the grower from a, from a UPL perspective. You know, obviously commodity prices are, you know, something to be excited about today. Um, input costs have gone up to match that as well. I mean, it's, it hasn't taken away much of the much of the risk there. But, you know, I, from a, a grower perspective, I think continuing to think about, as we think about weed resistance and resistance management, and, you know, back to Lynn talking about being a student of the game, and again, doing the program approach beyond one year, thinking about it for multiple years, um, and really working with a trusted advisor in that, in that process. Lynn, what do you think? What what are you optimistic about? What do growers need to be optimistic about oh, going in? Yeah, I, um, we're in unprecedented times in many, many ways. I mean, we've all spoke to that, I think, today really well. But there, in those times, we also grow and learn more than we do. You know, um, uh, uh, I have several young... Uh, several young men that work and and we've had you always have you have some things that don't always go right but they're always like well we didn't do, you know we wrecked that that didn't work right well we didn't wreck it we just figured out a way not to do it and i um i think a student of the game speaks to that a little bit right let's figure out how not to do something but i think what today's times and what we should be optimistic about is we're also unprecedented in our way to an analyze and gather data we're unprecedented in the way we can look at things and evaluate things right so i think that is a great um a great point we're at. I think uh, data, information, um, you know, we all have phones and computers and, I mean, let's be honest, it's a phone. I, I, we have data and information at our fingertips that you can't imagine before. Um, take advantage of that, right? Find the little things that make you different. Again, don't do everything different than your dad did, but find little things you can tweak and do better. I, I'm very excited about that. I'm excited about um, some of the things, again, from us, and I'll, I'll speak from the R&D standpoint, things we have coming. There are things coming that are, are completely different. The preview is the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion, mm -hmm. from UPL. I think UPL is someone that um, you spoke greatly about us, but we're the top five company that nobody knows about, mm -hmm. right? I speak uh, hundreds of times a year. I would guess not 25% of the people who know who we are. And I could be shameful of that, but I'm not and proud because that means we have opportunity for people that don't know who we are. And once they know who we are, they're going to want to do business with us. Yeah, and, and one other point I'll add from uh just from an op the optimistic point for the farmer, is that <clears throat> you know if you look in this building here, most of the people that are standing around here are directly tied to a farm from their past or have worked on a farm in the past. We certainly understand the pain points that the farmer's going through today. And I'll guarantee you, everyone in this building here, we are working to help them. We really are. We want them to be successful. Um, so it's, it's a challenge for us but it's a challenge for distribution, it's a challenge for the equipment companies, and we know it's a challenge for the farmer as well, but we are all working together to really help the farmer. I want to go back to, to open ag. Can you give me an example of, of how, how, that, how that has been used, how that works, a success story, if you will? Yeah. So, you know, and I hate to keep coming back to the two products that we keep talking about. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but unfortunately, I have to because it, it, there's certainly, I think Preview is a perfect example of that where we certainly could have come out with a sulfentrazone metribuzin uh, mixture. There are several in the marketplace right now. They're DF formulations. So they're a granular based formulation and, and they're good products. But farmers have issues with that formulation when they're mixing them in the tank. Um, if they don't get them mixed up quite well enough, you can have issues when you're spraying, you know. And so from an open ag concept where we try to look at things differently, 
that's where we looked at the fact that can we come up with an SC formulation that we know that'll get mixed up in water much more easily. We know it'll go into formulation. We know that it'll get sprayed more evenly and accurately across the field. And at the end of the day, it'll provide better control. And so I think that's, not that I want to keep coming back to that, but I think it is a great example of open ag for UPL. And, and, and like Lynn said, we've got more that's coming when you look at our full portfolio that's to be launched over the next several years. UPL will be a, a name brand for the farmer over the next several years, for sure. People have a lot of places that they can go to do business today. Why UPL? Let's, let's start over here, Lynn. Okay, uh, so Brian started off and he talked about, um, he talked about all of our access, and I think that is huge. We have access to north of 80 different AIs, and that it may be closer to 90 at this point. Over 200 separate SKUs. If you have something and you need it, we probably have it. At some point, we have had it. You have sprayed our product or used our product. You didn't know it. We just want you to know about it now. And I, I think that's. I think that is really a, a huge difference. And I, I, I think that the other reason why. Um, I've never been involved with a company that's as mobile as this is and can make and move and change. So I'm going to go back to, I know some of the history of Preview and Brian is spot on. I'll tell the rest of the story. We had a, we had another formulation. We had a liquid formulation, but it wasn't right. We waited two more years, right? Companies don't do that. They shove it out. They make do. They make adjustments later. We didn't. We did the right thing. We shelved it. We waited. And then we brought it out. We brought out the right product for the right acre at the right time. That is huge. I, I, I think that's awesome. I think our, our ability to take products like that and repurpose that is awesome. There's no silver bullets in the, in, in, in the that I can see coming anytime soon. We've got to be good at what we're doing. We have to be students of the game and understand AIs and pain points and what the grower wants. And we have to understand all those things to me in order to continue to move forward. I think UPL is in a better position than anybody in the industry. Yeah, if I can add to that, I think the agility of UPL, right, I think speaks to what, you know, although stopping to take the time to do it right, but also the agility to shift as the market moves as well, and having access to those different products, being able to, to be more responsive to what the grower needs versus set in on one thing. So I think our agility is extremely important. Brian? I think the last thing, it's maybe a little bit different, but it's more on the personal side of UPL. You know, we are... A, a family-owned operation. The fifth largest ag chem company in the world is a family organization. Um, the owner will call me up and talk to me. The owner's probably called up Lynn or James at some point and talked to them. These other large organizations aren't set up in that structure and in that way. And so I will tell you that the owner w comes to the United States and he goes around and he, he wants to talk to farmers. He wants, he wants to get to know them personally. He wants to know what their issues they have and, and to see how we can help them. So that's why, again, you know, we're, we're really, our focus all leads back to how can we make things easier and better for the farmer. It keeps coming back to people and, and service. And uh, obviously, you want to have a, a very good product, but you also need to be able to work with that farmer and, and work with the team and, and others to be able to get it there. So this has been um, this has been a, a, a great discussion today. And you're here at Commodity Classic. You're seeing a lot of farmers come through, and they're farmers of of every shape and size from all different geographies. As you have those farmers come through and, and leave leave your booth. Brian, what is it that you want growers to walk away from this exhibit remembering about UPL? Yeah, and, and I said some of them already, and you can't pick it up from our booth, obviously, but you know, we, we are a family-owned operation. We're the fifth largest chemical company in the world. We have an expansive portfolio. So as Lynn mentioned earlier, we likely have a product that they are using today and we have other products that can help them out on their farm. We have other solutions that they can utilize to help with their issues that they have on their, their farms today. And you know, our team is here to help them resolve those issues that they have. So stop by, talk to us, and, and we'll you know, do what we can for you. James, what, do you, what about you? What do you want growers to walk away 
from the UPL exhibit knowing? The, I think primarily that you know we're an organization that wants to listen and so that we want that feedback from growers and so you know and, and obviously they're they're thinking about it every day also right so they're you know they're out there they're living it they've got ideas of what would work to put it together you know i think we want them to know that we're interested in that we care about what they say and so to you know either through their retailer with our local folks you know however it may be talk to us tell us what they need so that we can we can build things that's going to make their operation not only good this year but again into the future right sustainability is an important part of what upl is doing as well and when you think about what growers are doing and when they you know they want to pass on what they're doing to the next generation we want to help them be part of that and how do we build solutions for them that's maybe not only traditional chemistry but new things that are coming along as well from a biological or a biosolutions perspective also that we can engage them with for the long term so want them to know that we're interested in what they're doing we want to engage with them in a very personal level you're up next, Lynn. Okay, I'll be. I'll keep it short. This you time. don't have to keep it no, short. You're no, fine. No, 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 no. I, I need to be concise <laughs> on this. Here's what I want. I want the the grower to come to this booth, and I would really like for them to come in and go. I don't know who UPLs. Tell me who they are. And when they leave, I want them to go. I didn't know them, but I'm glad I stopped, and I can't wait to stop again. I think that's the shortest answer I've ever ever heard you give. I, know. I, me, I try. Me too. Yeah. That's that's all very fair. So from so from this conversation that we've had, what do you want growers to take away from this conversation? And, and uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'll go. I I want to take from this conversation. I think you sh it should echo clear. Family owned, mm -hmm. innovative, uh, students with you. We want to work with you, right? Um, uh, we're here for you, um, and I, I, I want you to know, again, we're trying to portray that we're here to listen, and I can tell you how much I care, but let us show you how much we care. Yeah, and we're just really getting started. I think that's the other thing, is people learn more about UPL and where we are. We're really just getting started, and whether it's the Paraplus HD or it's the preview, you know, we really see these as the start to something more long-term. And so, you know, that's the, from this conversation that, yeah, we're, we're excited about the things we're launching today. We're excited about um, the short term, but really more interested in the long term. And so, you know, from this conversation, know that we're, we're gonna continue to build things that meet their needs. Yeah, and I, I think the last thing, just for the, for the grower, farmer, is that you know we work with again a traditional approach into the marketplace. So if they're interested in UPL, if they, you know, if they can come to the show and talk to us, but when they go back to their farms, you know, go back into your distribution, go back to your retail, say I'm interested in some of these products that I've heard about, and ask them about it because that is how we go through market, and that's um, how they'll want to talk to their partners back home to get the products. Okay, that was that was going to be my uh, one of my follow up questions. You heard something here today that, you know, that really piqued your interest. Where do you go to learn more? Can you go to your local retailer? What's, what's your next step? So, as I just mentioned, sorry. So it, it really is. It, it's going back to that, your local retailer, um, asking them about UPL products, ask about UPL, but you can also go to our website. Obviously, we have a website. You can go there. We'll have all of our our portfolio, we have it listed out by crop, so if, you, if you're if you growing corn or soy or oranges or grapes or palm, or you, you can go into the website, take a look, see what products we have that fit, that can be solutions for you on your farm. Okay, and the, the website uh, for the Preview 2.1 SC, it has its own website. It does, for sure. It's previewherbicide.com, and so you can learn more information there about Preview. We'll have some data there as well as where it's registered um, and where they can go get go get access to it. And we do want growers to try it this year, right? As we think about it, you know, give them an opportunity to, to see what it looks like versus other products out there and, and doing the things that we expect it to do for them. Sure, one thing that I, I did not ask a little earlier as we, you know, we're talking about supply chain issues, um, availability. Yeah, so we're gonna have limited availability in this first year as we um, learn more about it. And, um, but going into the next season, for sure, we're gonna be in really good shape, so, yeah. Okay, uh, any, anything else that you would like to add? 
Nope, they nailed it. Go to upl-na.com for more information on all our great products. That's exactly what I was hoping that uh, that you would say. Anything that we left out <laughs> that we want to make sure that uh, that growers know, um, take away, maybe it's not something we discussed here today, just anything that we left out in the conversation. I don't I I think I'm good. I don't. I don't. I think we 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 plowed a lot of dirt here today. I'm, okay. I think we're good. <laughs> Plowing dirt. That's what it's all about. Well, I want to thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, again, for joining us here today, Brian, James, and Lynn. Um, it is an important conversation, and I know you're having a lot of important conversations here at Commodity Classic with farmers from the trade show floor at Commodity Classic and the UPL booth. For Brownfield, I'm Cindy Young.